Today, everybody, we're going to be talking about nakedness. Is there any place in art for the naked human body? We're going to be looking at this with the help of St. John Paul II and the help of a marvelous nun, Sister Wendy. I first stumbled upon the work of Sister Wendy, I don't know, 30 plus years ago. I was channel surfing one night and this nun in full habit I see on a PBS station is standing in front of this uh, nude painting in a museum somewhere, uh, some naked woman in the painting, and here she is in full habit. And she was talking so unselfconsciously about <laughs> about this woman's pubic hair, and she kind of has a, a little bit of a buck, you know, some buck teeth there. And she said, she said, "Look at the beautiful puff of her pubic hair." And I was like, "This is not the kind of nun that I had in Catholic school. Who is this lady?" Anyway, it was about a year later that I first read Theology of the Body. And John Paul II says he has a whole section on nakedness in art. What is appropriate? What is not appropriate? What's the difference between, for example, pornography and the nakedness in the Sistine Chapel? Right? There's a big difference here. And let us remember that St. John Paul II, as part of the restoration project of the Sistine Chapel, he ordered the removal of many of the loincloths that previous popes had ordered to be put on top of Michelangelo's original nudes. John Paul II said, take them off. And he said, take them off in the name of Christian purity. Because Michelangelo, he said, had allowed himself to be guided by those evocative words from the book of Genesis, where we read, the man and his wife were both naked and felt no shame. Then John Paul II said, if we are seeing the way God sees, the naked body can be unclothed and retain its dignity. But if we see only through our fallen humanity, the naked body degrades very easily in the way we see it. And that's an important distinction. It degrades not in itself, because as John Paul II says, the human body always retains its inherent goodness and dignity. But we degrade it in the way we are looking at it. Right? We all know there's a difference, a big difference between looking and seeing. They look, but they do not see, Jesus says, of the crowd. Right? They look, but they do not see. What's the difference between looking at someone and seeing someone. Huge difference, right? Looking stops at externals. Seeing penetrates into the mystery of the person. The nakedness of the Sistine Chapel, a skilled artist, and we'll hear Sister Wendy explain this as well, a skilled artist has the ability to to draw us into the whole mystery, the whole beauty, the whole dignity of the human being. John Paul II says that a skilled artist, like a Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, gives us or invites us to, to see the spousal meaning of the body, which means the body's call to love in the image of God. That's purity of heart. And I don't know that I've ever met a nun with more delightful purity of heart than Sister Wendy. Let's take a look of art. Were you shocked by the number of paintings that dealt with the naked human body, with, uh, with sex, passion, the carnal side of human nature? It would never have entered my mind to be shocked. I can't think why Catholic. one should be shocked. Yes, but Catholics believe in God, you know. Well, I know that, but so American the, but Catholics have also <laughs> for a long time uh, been very, uh, uh, shall I say, wary of public displays of... Well, obviously... Okay, so here the interviewer 
is confusing an authentic Catholic vision of the world, of the human body, of human sexuality, with a puritanical vision of the world, of the human body, and of human sexuality. Never, ever, ever should we confuse purity with puritanism, right? Puritanism is a fearful rejection of the body and sexuality. Purity is a rejoicing in the beauty of the human body as God created it to be, as a revelation of the divine mystery. And, and here this guy who only has as a frame of reference in his mind puritanism is encountering a nun who has purity. Sister Wendy has this ability to see the body without taint, right? Not that she's some perfect human being, but she's been given a vision of the body that really is sharing in God's delight. When God looked at everything he made and said, behold, it's very good. That's what she's about to say anyway. Check this out. We'll keep going. Would be something appropriate. I mean, I would be a distressed if I was to see somebody as a naked walking down the street. Um, I would think it was inappropriate behavior. I wouldn't be shocked. I would feel compassionate towards the poor person. But um, when you're telling a story in which often the point depends upon uh, nakedness, or one of the great myths where part of being a god is you can afford to be naked and unashamed, this is very appropriate. And the artists do this with great reverence and delight. So she's making very important distinctions here, all the right distinctions, right? There's an appropriate place for nakedness and there's an inappropriate place place for nakedness. If some person was walking naked down the street, she says, well, that would be inappropriate. I would feel compassion for the person because this person doesn't know his or her dignity. Uh, and why would that be? Why, why a naked walking down the street? Why would that naked person not know his or her dignity? Because in a fallen world, why do we cover the naked human body? This is so important. We cover the naked body not because it's bad. We cover the naked body because it is so good good and we feel an instinctive need or at least we should feel if we know our dignity we will feel an instinctive need in a fallen world to cover the goodness of the body to protect it from being degraded again we cover the body not because it's bad but to protect it from being degraded by a lustful look and what do we mean by lustful look a look that doesn't see, right? They look, but they do not see. A look that stops at the surface, uses the physical for my own gratification, but in the process, because that body is not just a body, it's somebody, I end up using another human being. That is how we degrade others. When our sexual desires treat the other as object for my selfish pleasure, I'm not loving that person, I'm using that person. Let's keep going and see where this goes. A serious point here in the sense that you talk on camera before millions of people so unselfconsciously of uh, nudity and carnality and passion, all in the art that you observe, that one of your critics, Jermaine Greer again, scoffs at the notion that a consecrated virgin uh, can talk to us about these things. Well, see, why does she think that anybody should not delight in the creative work of God. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's, it's very illogical. God made the body. And Preach this it, Sister suggests Wendy. that sort of God made mistakes about certain parts of the body. You know that, um, unfortunately, um, he, he, he's done these shameful things. We must do our best to cover them up. This, this, is, this, is, not, this is not the faith. Preach it. The faith is that we, God looked at his creation and thought it was good, thought it was beautiful. We're made in the image of God. And there's, there's nothing, nothing amiss in any part of the human body. But a, again, it should be appropriate. There's, to me, something far more salacious about these sort of sniggers and criticisms than in, in just... A Christian delight in God's skill. Woo! A Christian delight in God's skill. 
That is freedom. That is purity of heart. Now, we could, we could use that in a, we could twist that up for our own selfish purposes, right? Well, I just look at porn to take a Christian delight in God's skill. Um, really? The very intent of porn is to portray the body as a thing for others' titillation. If you stumbled upon porn and really had a Christian perspective in looking at it, you'd weep. You'd weep because these people, these men and women in the porn, don't know who they really are. Right? I want to comment on, on one more thing here. Jermaine Greer, the interviewer, brings up Jermaine Greer, who was criticizing Sister Wendy. Sister Wendy rose to popularity in the 90s when she had this PBS special uh, where she would review works of art. So she was pretty popular back in the day. And Jermaine Greer, who was a feminist writer, said, as the interviewer said, she scoffs at the idea that a consecrated virgin, a nun, could speak to the world about human sexuality and the naked body? Come on, what? But again, see, this approach thinks that the nun is someone who represses all that is sexual. This is a total misunderstanding of what consecrated virginity is, right? There are two bookends of the Bible, right? The Bible begins with the marriage of man and woman. It ends with the marriage of Christ and the church. The whole purpose of human sexuality, the whole purpose of the two becoming one flesh, is to be a sign in the world that points us to the eternal marriage. That's what we see when we wear our sacramental lenses. We see human sexuality as a sign of transcendence, as a sign that points us to an infinite eternal mystery of union with God. That's why God made us as sexual beings and called the two to that intimate union, as a sign here on planet Earth of a destiny, of an infinite reality that Scripture calls the marriage of the Lamb the marriage of Christ and the church. And when Christ says some remain celibate for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, what he's saying is some skip this book into the Bible, the sign that points to the eternal marriage of the kingdom, some skip that and devote all of their eros, all of their yearning to the infinite reality, to the eternal marriage. This is what a wise virgin is. Remember, Jesus says we have to distinguish between the wise and the unwise virgins. And how do we tell the difference? Well, the unwise virgins, he says, have no oil for their lamps, right? They're cold. But the wise virgins, they have oil and their lamps are lit on fire. That means they have learned to aim their yearning, the fire, the passion of their eros, that's the proper word for it, towards the infinite embrace. And the more we understand that infinite destiny that we have, the more the light of the kingdom shines back on this earth. And like Sister Wendy, we start to take delight, a free, beautiful, holy, sacred delight in God's creation. That is purity of heart. And Sister Wendy is a wise virgin. Can I put it this way? That girl is on fire. She has her lamps lit. And that's what gives her the ability to see the body as God really created it to be, as a theology, as a revelation of his own inner mystery. My brothers and sisters, this is why the Theology of the Body Institute exists, to invite people into this great mystery of seeing the world as God created it to be, especially seeing our bodies as a sign of heavenly, divine realities. That's who we are. That's why God made us, to reveal through our bodies these infinite, beautiful, glorious truths. If you want to learn more about the theology of your body, Check out the link in the description below, tobforfree.com. Sign up and we will send you three free sessions of our introductory course, 
You will not regret it, my brothers and sisters. This stuff is life changing. Until next time, take care and may you see the world sacramentally. Thank you.